Welcome back to the Last Days Book Club. Today and in the next few sessions, we take a look at two short stories written by Bradley Booth, the author of a previous book featured on the book club, The Miracle of the Seventh Day Ox. These two short stories are entitled Bibles for Breakfast and Bread from Heaven. Both stories take place in the former Soviet Union. Both feature divine intervention, very similar to our last feature, It Must Have Been an Angel. And both are true accounts of God's providence in the life of our spiritual heroes. These stories, like all the features in the last day's book club, are designed to strengthen our faith for survival in these last days of Earth's history. There is no doubt, as we consider the events taking place in the world, that Satan and his coalition of evil are preparing to launch that final deception which will hold the world captive and have all men wander after the beast. If ever there was a time that we need to be steadfast in our faith and recognize that the truth of God must be our shield and buckler, it is now. SWM Radio and the Last Days Book Club recognize that it is only in God that we can be safe from the wiles of the devil, no matter how powerful his deceptions might be, and no matter what forces he might bring to discourage or destroy God's people. The stories and books featured here constantly remind us that he is a defeated foe, and time after time they show that faith in God is a more powerful force than anything that the great adversary can muster. Above all, faith is the greatest shield we have against him, and indeed, it will bring us the victory. We begin our reading today with the story, Bibles for Breakfast, featuring our heroes, Leonid, Alexander, and Natasha. Chapter 1 The snow squeaked and crunched under Alexander's feet as he trudged homeward from the train station. It had been a long day and he was tired. Lately, all the days seemed long for Alexander. He was always tired, it seemed. He stared up at the steel gray sky, growing dimmer by the minute with the coming of dusk. Low banks of clouds pressed down upon the city of Novosibirsk, Russia, making him even more depressed. Would spring never come? Would the damp coldness of winter never end? The trees lining the sidewalk along the street stood mute and naked in the final stages of winter. Stripped of any dignity that was once theirs, they waited dormant in their long winter vigil. Right now, that's the way Alexander felt, dormant and listless, with no hope of better times to come. A full head of hair and square shoulders made him appear young and strong, but the deep-set eyes and dark lines on his face gave him a despondent look. Alexander was a security officer in a local bank. In many cities in many countries of the world, the job could have given him a sense of importance, but not in Novosibirsk. Not even the handgun that he wore strapped to his thigh in a leather holster could do that. Alexander knew he hadn't gotten the job because he possessed special skills, and he hadn't gotten the job because he knew someone important. He would rather have earned the job based on his qualifications, but as it was, It was just a basic job in security. He was six feet tall and weighed 200 pounds, so he qualified. That's the way jobs were handed out in Novosibirsk. He was no more special than anyone else 
in the USSR. Communist Russia had a slogan that was known by everyone and quoted by the masses of the working class. A job for everyone and everyone for a job. The expression was intended to bring a sense of security and equality, but somehow for Alexander, it didn't ring true today. He knew he should be content and even grateful for his job. His wife, Natasha, had a good steady job too as a manager of the high-rise apartment complex where they lived. Two incomes were better than one, but even together, their salaries were never enough. No matter how they managed their money, it was hard to get ahead financially. No matter how much he and Natasha scraped and saved, they just couldn't make their rubles stretch to the end of the month. He would have liked to get a second job, but it wasn't allowed. They didn't own a car, of course. Almost no one did. On top of that, the furniture in their simple flat was drab and unattractive. And sometimes even food was hard to get too. Simple things like bread or apples or salt, for instance. Beets, cabbage and onions were fairly plentiful. But if there were other specialty items that people wanted, they had to be patient. Alexander could remember countless times when he had to stand in line for hours just to get a few rolls of toilet paper. It didn't seem right for a nation that claimed to be the greatest on earth. He might have been content to live without luxuries, but even the little things in life seemed out of reach. It had been years since Alexander had been able to give his wife something special to wear. It nearly broke his heart every time he saw her looking longingly at a pretty dress in one of the rare foreign magazines that found its way into Novosibirsk. The government did its best to control such propaganda, but from time to time, even newspapers printed pictures of people with status. The women would be dressed splendidly with fashionable hats or furs or nice boots, and always it was the wives of government officials or rich oil tycoons or maybe some KGB officer. It was at times like this that Alexander felt the worse. If equality was so important in the communist culture, why should some folks have fine things and others not? As Alexander slowed his pace, a lone crow landed nearby in the branches of a tree. It cocked its head to one side and cawed raucously, as if to taunt Alexander for his misfortunes in life. Fortunately, Alexander had reached home, and he quickly turned up the sidewalk that led to the high-rise apartment complex. Alexander stepped into the dimly lit elevator and made it to their fifth floor apartment. When he turned the key in the lock, he was met at the door by the family's two dogs, Boris and Lexi, who came running up to meet him excitedly. Like many Russians, Alexander and Natasha loved dogs and their two Siberian Huskies were the pride and joy of their life. They had no children yet, and this made the bond of affection that much stronger between them and the dogs. Boris, did you miss me? Alexander grabbed the younger of the two dogs and gave him a beer hug as the overgrown puppy jumped into his arms. The more sedate Lexi approached her master with dignity and poise. Boris was her puppy, but she knew she held the most important place in her master's heart. The usual greeting by his dogs cheered Alexander after the cold snowy walk home from the train station. For a moment he forgot his troubles as he soaked up the affection. A dog is truly a man's best friend, he mused, as they licked his hands and clambered for attention. Their thick coats of fur felt warm and soft to his touch, and he knew they were indeed a blessing to him and Natasha. Alexander pulled a small paper bag from his pocket and took out a piece of Russian black bread. Well, Boris, I have one slice of bread from my lunch today. Would you like some of it? 
He roughed up the dog's fur and broke off a piece to give to Boris, his cavernous mouth a bottomless pit. While Boris gulped the bread, Alexander slipped the remaining piece to Lexi. Shall we go for a walk tonight after supper? he asked the dogs excitedly. Alexander didn't really feel up to walking tonight, but he knew the dogs always waited expectantly for their usual romp in the snow, and they needed the exercise after being cooped up in the small apartment all day. Unfortunately, they couldn't run free outside while he and Natasha were working. For one thing, it was illegal, and for another, these dogs were handsome animals. They were worth some money, and the envy of everyone who saw them with Alexander when he took them out for a walk. After the usual welcome, Alexander had time to greet Natasha, his pretty little wife. He gave her a kiss, briefly looking into her blue eyes, and then sat down heavily at the kitchen table. Her soft oval face, wreathed in blonde curls, gazed at him appreciatively as she continued preparing the borscht for their supper. When she noticed his despondent look, she came to stand by his side. What is it, Alex? she asked gently. Oh, I'm just feeling sorry for myself, he confessed. I've had a headache all afternoon. And of course, my replacement at the bank came late as usual, so I had to stay longer again. That guy thinks he can come late just because his uncle is a personal friend of the bank manager. Alexander frowned. And then the long walk home was cold. The north wind is terrible. These winters just never seem to let up, and this year seems worse than most. I can't imagine what it would be like to live where it is warm all the time. Alexander stopped short in his list of complaints. I don't know why the cold gets me down like this. Maybe it's a sign of old age. Old age? Come on now, you're still a young man. Look, you hardly have any gray hairs. Natasha smiled at Alexander and ran her fingers through his thick head of black hair. When you have white hair on your head, or maybe no hair at all, then maybe I'll feel sorry for you. They laughed together as Natasha continued preparing supper, moving from the stove to the table, from the table to the counter, and then back to the stove again. In his heart, Alexander knew that Natasha was the finest woman in all of Novosibirsk. She had to be. She was beautiful and kind and sweet, and to him, these made the best combination for a wife. The end of chapter one. Chapter two. Alexander and Natasha ate in silence, enjoying one another's company after a long day. The savory borscht smelled so good with its steaming beets, potatoes, cabbage, and garlic. To Alexander, it was the best thing for his spirits and his stomach on a night like this. When he had finally eaten his fill of borscht and Russian bread, he pushed his bowl away and leaned back in his chair. Something is bothering you tonight, Natasha ventured, and I don't think it's just the weather. You're a wise one, Tash. Alexander half smiled at her and looked down at his plate. When she didn't get up to clear the table, he finally looked into her face and nodded. And you're right. Something is bothering me, but I don't think it can be fixed. I'm discouraged. He sighed and shook his head slowly. The economy is not good now, and prices have been going up everywhere. I need a raise, and so do you. It's been three years since you got that raise of two rubles per month. It's just not enough anymore. She laid her hand on his, but said nothing. Sometimes I feel as though life is so pointless, he blurted. I mean, what's the purpose of it all? Why are we here? What do we have to look forward to? Surely there must be something more to life 
than just getting up in the morning, eating, going to work, coming home, eating again, and going to sleep. There has to be something more. There has to be a reason for life, a meaning for our existence. Think about it, he kept on. Babies are born, they grow up, then they marry and have babies of their own. If they're lucky, they grow old and see their grandchildren, and then they die. He shook his head again. But that's just it, Tasha. There has to be something more to living than just the regular routine of life that comes and goes every day. It made Natasha sad to see Alexander like this. Alexander was not a complainer. It wasn't in his nature. He was a good man, a hard worker, and he was not inclined to envy what others had. He was generally a happy man and a stable one in their marriage. He was always saying the right thing at the right time to assure Natasha of his love and remind her of the future they would have together. When Natasha's father had died unexpectedly, it was Alexander who made all the arrangements. Natasha's sisters and mother were too shaken up to tend to the details, and even her brother wasn't much use in making the necessary funeral preparations. But today, things were different, and Natasha had to admit that she sensed something had been troubling him recently. He seemed to be slipping into a state of depression that he couldn't shake. It was as if he was struggling with something unseen, something that lurked beneath the surface of their simple existence, as he put it. And that was just it. Because it wasn't ordinary, it seemed that Alexander couldn't fix it. Alexander was a proud and strong man, but tonight she knew she needed to just listen and let him talk it out. Maybe that would help. A sudden knock at the door interrupted their thoughts. The two of them looked at one another. Who could it be? By the sound of the knock, it was no doubt a stranger. And at this time of night, that could be a problem. Alexander got up from the table to answer the door. Was it a neighbor? The police? Even more serious, was it the KGB? Alexander hesitated at the door as he remembered the stories some of his neighbors had told him. When the KGB came calling, they always had reasons. And sometimes, even if a man and his family were innocent, they still paid the price. That was the name of the game with the KGB. Fear and intimidation. The secret police sometimes got out of hand, but who could stop them? Most people were too scared to challenge the system. Once in a while, the KGB got themselves in trouble politically, and then they had to bluff their way out of the fixes they got themselves into. But mostly, the KGB lived above the law and did what they pleased. Alexander turned the lock on the door, pulled the bolt aside, and opened the door a crack. To his relief, it wasn't the KGB or even the police. It was a stranger, all dressed up in a white shirt, tie, and dress coat. Hello, the handsome young stranger greeted Alexander. My name is Leonid Sakovsky. I'm a book salesman, bringing good news to homes in this neighborhood. Good news? Alexander scoffed, opening the door wider. By now he had gotten over the initial relief of not having to deal with the secret police. What could possibly be good news, he argued. Winter won't end, the price of bread is up, and the local apartment superintendent has refused me the permits I asked for months ago to make improvements in my apartment. Alexander squinted at the book salesman. And on top of all of that, I've had a headache since noon today. I can see that your day has not been good, Leonid shook his head. 
stress is not a good thing. Fortunately, the books I have can help bring new meaning and peace to your life. We don't have time for anything that costs money. Do you read, comrade? Leonid was persistent. We're not interested. Alexander reached to close the door. But suddenly, Boris and Lexi pushed their way past him through the open doorway and began to sniff the stranger up and down. Get back, Boris. Come, Lexi. Alexander tried to pull the dogs away from Leonid. But the dogs pulled free from his grasp and kept brushing up against Leonid for attention. Nice dogs you have here, Leonid offered. I used to have a Siberian Husky when I was young. Gosha was his name. Best friend I ever had. He began stroking Lexi's fur. Your dogs remind me of him so much. Alexander was intrigued at the ease with which the stranger handled his dogs, and he began to relax. He smiled in spite of his impatience. Yes, I can certainly see that they like you. I've never seen them so friendly with a stranger. Thank you, Leonid's eyes lit up. I just need a few minutes of your time. As I mentioned before, I have books here in my bag that will bring hope and a new meaning to your life. Good books that can be read over and over again during the long winter months. Hmm. What book cannot be read again and again? That's what books are for, no? This is true, Leonid grinned at Alexander's humor. But these books can do much more. He pulled a Bible from his bag. This book here has all the answers to life's questions about good and evil in the world. And this other book is about the history of the Christian church from Roman times right down to our day. Leonid held up the second book. It's called The Great Controversy. The end of chapter 2. Chapter 3. Alexander didn't want to admit it, but he was suddenly very interested in what the book salesman was saying. He loved history and read any history book he could get his hands on. In school, history had been his favorite subject, especially ancient history. When he sat down with such a book in the evening, it was hard to put it down. Natasha sometimes had to remind him that it was late, and he needed to save some of the book for the next evening. You should have been a history professor, she would always laugh. The salesman was still talking, but Alexander had not yet invited him in. Suddenly, Natasha was at the door. Alexander, how can you be so rude? Where are your manners? she scolded. Don't leave him standing in the doorway. This is a nice man, and I can see that you definitely are interested in what he has brought with him. Oh, I'm sorry, Alexander apologized. Yes, yes, please, come in. We don't have much money, but I'm interested in what your books have to say. Natasha bought Leonid some tea as he began to talk about the two books. If you have ever wondered about the meaning of life, these books will help you, Leonid began. Alexander stared at Natasha in surprise. Hadn't they been talking about this very thing just a few minutes earlier? On days when you feel like everything is going wrong, these books can do wonders, Leonid handed Alexander the Bible. This book will answer many of the questions you have about how to have a healthy life and how to live longer. It will help you not to worry about whether there will be enough bread for your table or about whether Russia will be going to war. It will help you have peace in your hearts and know what the future holds. Leonid's voice grew soft. Best of all, it will introduce you and your wife to the God of Heaven, 
who loves you more than you can imagine and cares about what happens in your life. These books will tell us all this, all this, and much more, Leonid assured him. This is too much to ask of one book. Alexander turned the first few pages of the Bible. The Holy Bible. He slowly read the words. I've heard of this before. It's a good book. The best in the world. I have sold more copies of this than any other. Tell me more. Leonid settled himself in his chair and watched the young couple eagerly looking the book over. It was obvious to him that the Holy Spirit was in this home working on their hearts already. The Holy Bible is a book inspired by God himself. It tells of God's plan to make a new world where there will be no more pain and suffering. And it will help us to live a better life now? Yes, this is guaranteed. Hmm, what about this other book here, The Great Controversy? It sounds like a book about fighting and war, maybe. In a way, it is. It talks about the war between good and evil, between God and Satan. But we don't need to worry. God will win the war and even come back to take us to live with him forever in heaven. Natasha's face brightened and she leaned forward to get a closer look. Your book speaks of this? It does. She shook her head in amazement. Then this book must be very good. The best. Alexander studied the two books a few moments longer. Then we will take both of them, he said abruptly. A Bible and the great controversy? Yes. If the message they bring has given us hope already and we haven't even opened them up, think about how our lives will be changed when we read them. Leonid listened in awe at the testimony these two wonderful people were giving him. Here they were, already receptive to the Holy Spirit and the powerful message that God had in store for them. Do you have copies here tonight that we can buy them right now? Natasha asked excitedly. Well, actually, no, Leonid admitted, but I can come back in a few days with a copy for you. Many others have asked for copies this week, so I must go to my house and get those copies. I could bring them to you in a few days. You may choose which night. Should we give you the money right now? You may do that, or you can wait and give me the money when I come again. Alexander looked at Natasha. I think we must give him the money now. If he doesn't have enough books for everyone, he will have to give the books to those who have already paid for them, and then we'll have to wait even longer. He looked at Leonid expectantly. Am I right? That is usually the way it works, Leonid replied. He raised a silent prayer of praise to heaven. This was truly an amazing couple. They were so hungry for the word of God and already so full of faith that they were willing to pay up front and trust Leonid to bring the books to them. Good, then it is settled. But you must stay a little while longer and tell us more of what is in these books. Alexander went to the bedroom to get the rubles needed to pay for the books while Natasha refilled their cups with hot tea. And Boris and Lexi came to Leonid for more attention and a good scratching behind their ears. All heaven drew near at the scene before them. Just a few minutes before, this young couple 
had been weighed down with the troubles and cares of the world. Now they could feel the power of God working in their home, and already they had a fresh new outlook on life. The end of chapter 4.